talk about video games our kids our kids our kids our kids are influenced by video games you name it you know what my grandkids what they got so many games they got mad and they got the mario brothers they got the i'm not gonna say the teenage mutant mutant turtles i had that <laughs> but and they have mortal Kombat. they have all of these games and I, you know, with so many, and there's so many of them, more, what's that, combat, killing people. You know, it's, it's bad, but it's good. But how can it be bad and good? I think that if children get games that are, ed, that are educating them, that is good. I think that is good. But the array of games out of there, and you know what, this industry of video games on the internet, man, they are making so much money. You know what, I went to school for the wrong thing. I should have went to school <laughs> to read code and learn how to make the games. But I guess it's an oxymoron saying, saying me saying that, since I'm saying that it's dangerous. But that was before I was conscious. <laughs> and even then that would have been wrong. You know, but hey, I get caught up in the games too. You know, I go to Facebook, but I don't get caught up into any type of games where they're killing people, uh, hurting people, or doing harm to people. But our kids are looking at these games, and you know what? We want to examine what is the effect? What is the effect? What is going through the mind of somebody? five, four years old, looking at a game, and somebody's constantly, they're constantly killing somebody in the game. Actually, cartoons could be um, similar to that by them looking at cartoons, because when you look at cartoons, you see, you ever see the Road Runner, G.I. Joe? Okay, and other things, they're watching people, they're watching, um, Cartoons hurt each other, destroy things. What is that putting in their minds? You know what? What does that say about the parent? What does that say about the parent? You know, it's like the, the parents are not really, I'm not going to say they are monitoring because I can't make a generalization and say that all, but there's a huge percentage of parents that are not monitoring what their children eat. And I bet you the majority of you, you can even tell who your child's best friend is. Okay? You don't know. <laughs> okay? So you don't know that. So by them playing all those video games that are destructive to their work, to their mental stability, because them playing video games like that all day, don't say they don't watch all day. I mean, some of them watch all day, and we can't say, again, we can't say 100%. And the parents, where are you? What are you doing? Do you monitor? what your child is watching on television? Do you monitor the video games that they play? Do you, um, do you know what they listen to on the radio? Do you know? No, you don't know. The majority, because you know what? You can never sit up here and say 100%. You can't, you know, because you know what? That's making a generalization. A generalization is like saying, you know what, man? Um, I hate to even say that all black people eat watermelon. I shouldn't even say it that. But that's to illustrate my point. You cannot say 100% about anything. And parents, I just want you to be mindful that your children, by them playing all these video games, by them listening to all these videos that are destructive to their meant to their to their sublimable mind, they can be destructive. They could be angry. 
And you know what? They can take it out on society. That's why I guess you do need games with PG on it, parents, guides. But what good does that do if you have a video game with PG on there? Uh, I rate it very, very violent. If the parent is not monitoring, if the parent does not have something on their television that limits, not limits, that limits the things that they can look at on cable in the video games that they can play, you know. So the parents, you need to sit back and really, really, really take a look. And you know what? Not only does it destroy them, Mentally, some of them, because you got to understand, these are impressionable minds. And you know what? They're at the molding age. And you know when you mold somebody and you're shaped by your experiences, you're shaped by the things you see as a child. You know, your mother and father ever do something and they thought you were asleep. But you know what? My grandmother told me, all eyes just closed, not really closed. And I'm, I know I'm not quoting my grandmother right. Just because you think somebody is asleep and they don't know what's going on, they know everything. They know what's going on and they can interpret it. So the video games can be destructive in one of the, one of the aspects that I realize by sitting down, it just watching children. You ever notice? They got their phones. Da -da. They're walking. They're on social media. They're on Facebook. On their phones. They're on TikTok. They're on um, all these social media platforms. Watching things. And they're walking down the streets. And they don't even know what's going on. You know, I saw something on um, YouTube. Let me turn my phone off because I've been warned by my um, <laughs> uh, floor manager. You don't want to turn my phone off while I'm here, Ms. Elma Lucas. She's done that to me before, and I don't want to hear your phone ring. <laughs> but, I, you know, I was, on, I was on YouTube, and I was looking at this lady. She was walking. And you know what? She slept, but she held on to her phone. <laughs> and you know what? But she got up and did this, and she slipped again. But she dropped the bags, but she held on to her phone. And you know what? I thought it was funny. Couldn't be laughing at somebody falling. But it was just, it was funny to me because no matter what she, the, all the things that she dropped, she just held on to her phone. I think even when she was down on the ground, she was looking. So, so the thing is, with these video games, a lot of children, they stay in the house. They don't go out to the park like they used to and play basketball, play softball. I think we play hide, go seek, but I don't even know if kids do that anymore. You know what? But they, they have, they have because they spend so much time in front of the television, in front of the Xbox, in front of the PlayStation, they have lost socialization skills. Socialization skills are, you know what, man, I'm going down to my friend's house, house just to see how he's doing, and we're going to walk to the park, and we're going to hop. And they have become desensitized. They have become desensitized. I removed, I detached from a segment of the population because they're caught up in a matrix. They're caught up in a matrix. So if you saw the movie, The Matrix, they're caught up in a matrix. And you know what? They rush home to get to the video game. And they rush home to get to the television. And they rush home to get to the radio to take them away from this world. And you even have some so deep with video games to where they have goggles 
This is like goggles that they put on side and around their eyes and they're like living in a virtual world just to escape the reality. What is that doing? That takes, that is taken away from the socialization skills of the person because they are so attached to an inanimate object. PlayStation, Xbox, television, and desire to be in a program world that's imaginary. And that's a matrix. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to say me, okay? I, you know, I was discussing this with Mike Gleason. Um, <laughs> we was laughing about it. I said, man, I got a, gr I got a grandson. That go for me, too. But see, that's not my child, though. I'm the grandfather. I got a child with grandchild, three years old, sitting up here playing on the phone, three years old, actually knowing, actually knowing what a cartoon channel is. And whining uh, when you take the phone from him because you have disturbed him in his matrix. His, his world that has been programmed by powers to be to take control of his mind, even at a young age. And then uh, just dumbfounded. And you know what I... I asked uh, one of my daughters, I ain't going to say, she, she'd be mad at me if I say her name. <laughs> so why do you let them do that? She said, Daddy, you old. You don't understand. Say, this is a new age. You know what? I think Mike Leeson said it too. You're right. This is a new world. So what happened is you have children that are desensitized because they're pressing buttons. This is my iPad. They're pressing buttons. And those buttons are taking out the opponents, uh, stabbing the opponents, hurting the opponents, blowing up tanks, blowing up figures that are made out of program. So therefore, it's desensitizing them towards violence. You know, it's sort of like when I was young, I'm guilty too when I looked at the Three Stooges. Okay, I got desensitized. I think I hit my brother on the head with a pot because I thought it was funny because I saw, I saw Mo do it. Mo is one of the Three Stooges. The old timers know what that is. He hit him on the head. I thought it was funny. And by me watching it, over and over again, after coming home from school, you know what? I hit my brother on the head with a pot. I think I even poked him in the eye, <laughs> which, which is ignorant, but you remember I was a child. Yeah, my parents should have been monitoring me. You know what I'm saying? So, so these things, and then you become, like again, you become detached from the society. Again, looking, looking at the road runner, seeing, some, seeing a cartoon, cartoon jump over a cliff, then land at the bottom. I think it's funny. Hey, there's people that jumped off their garages because they saw something like that on television. You know, and television programmers ought to be more mindful. You ought to be more mindful because you know what? These are children. These are children, these are children. And you're putting things in their subconscious mind that are destructive to their well-being and you're making them insensitive towards life. And some people just wake up in the morning, the first thing they do is, that's what adults do, they want immediate gratification. Oh, how many people like me on Facebook? <laughs> how many likes do I have on YouTube? And by you wanting the reward, by you wanting in the reward to see how many people like you on Facebook, 
and how many subscribers and how many people clapped your name and wrote things in your comments. What is that doing to you? What is that doing to your mind? If that's the, that's the second thing you do once you get up in the morning is go to Facebook. Because the first thing you should be doing, well, I'm not going to say relieving yourself, but you relieve yourself, you should be making your prayers. And you should be thanking God, Allah, Yah, a Jesus, peace and blessings be upon whoever you, whoever you designate to be uh, the Lord in your life. You should take time out of your day. But you know what? Um, I was... Um, there's a brother down here named um, Dr. Malik Kufianin, and he used to be with Brother Boys Yelps. And he said, damn, Cliff, he said, with your phone, we used to sing, we got the whole world in our hands. And I can't sing. <laughs> we got the whole world in our hands. He said, damn near do. He said, shit, you get, a fa you get an answer faster from Google than you do from above. <laughs> I said, man, why you say that, man? He said, I'm guilty of it. You know, and he said, um, they, they're treating the phone. Y'all don't know it's a chip in this phone. They're treating the, the phone like it's a deity. You know, they're treating the, they are treating the computer like it's a deity. And the first thing, again, I'm going to emphasize here, the first thing that you should do after you get yourself together is not go to Facebook or not go to YouTube. It's to pray to God. You know what? For guidance, guidance, understanding, and wisdom. And you know, I'm, I've always been the first to know that you know what. But without the Creator, the um, computer is not the first thing in my life. My phone is not the first thing in my life. My wife is not the first thing in my life. My daughter is not the first thing in my life. It's the Creator. Every, those things that I mentioned are, 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 are close to my heart, but you know what? They, um, they're, they're, they're not number one in my life. So that's what I, that, that, that is what I, that is what I, that is what, I, that is what and you probably say, damn, this man sitting up here talking all this stuff and he got this wild shirt on. This, this shirt is to illustrate the ill will of a new world order system that is taking control over the masses of people because the masses of people do not think critically. I did not say they did not, do not think. They don't think critically, you know. So you find time to do all type of things. Million things. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But what about your children? When well, you know that they're doing things that are destructive to their own well-being. But you find an excuse to find out what you want to do. But you know what? It's bigger than you. It's about your family. You know, I heard something on um, The Godfather. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> there's a movie called The Godfather. The Godfather asked, I forgot one of, the, uh, one of, his, one of his members. He said, uh, man, Santino, he said, uh, I'm using the word Santino, because that was the name in The Godfather, and I can't remember the guy's name. He said, do you spend time with your family? Me at his job, do you spend time with your family? He said, yeah, I spend time with my family. He said, that's good. He said, because a man can never be a man unless he spend time with his family. <laughs> and I thought, that, I thought that was a good line, but then when I really, 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 really sat down and thought about what he said, that, that, that is something that a man needs to do, whether you know what, whether it's your son, your daughter, whether you with that woman, with, whether you without that woman, or whether what whatever, whether you with her, are you not without her? Are you without her? And you need to monitor the behavior pattern of your child that's in your house. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. 
I'm guilty of fall. I'm guilty of falling short. You probably say, how can I call the kettle? How, how can I call the kettle black? I can call the kettle black. Yes, I can. I can call it black because you know what I did it. So you know what I'm saying to young parents out there and older parents. You need to spend precious time. You need to spend time with your children, and you need to monitor the video games that they play. You need to monitor the television shows that they watch and the music that they listen to. But now, you find time to do all other things. And you know what? Some of these things are foolish. The most precious, th second, second most precious thing you got is your family. I'll say the first is God. But you know what? You need to monitor your family. You know what? As a man, that is your responsibility. That's your responsibility. And if you're a single mother, you need to monitor what your children are doing because the things that are going in their mind, in their subconscious mind, will have a bearing, I could have a bearing on what their future holds. You need to, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself, not just... I just made that up, but it wasn't original, though. <laughs> but that, that, that's just something that parents need to do. And like I say, I understand that there's no blueprint, no blueprint for being a parent. parent. Uh, again, I will say that I made many, many mistakes, but damn it, I don't want you to make the mistakes that I made. Because you know what they mean? It may be somebody out there that doesn't have anybody to talk to them, to tell them this. So I use my little platform, you know. That's one thing about having your own platform. You, you, can, you have the ability to disseminate the information that you want to disseminate. And you know what? More, no one can marginalize you or censor you. And I find, I, find, I find that to be positive because you know what? You, at Can Television, I don't know how many households that I'm going into, but if this just affects one parent's life or one child's life and the message to the child, these things that I am talking about, you know what? You may have a parent that just don't give a damn. OK, so let's just act like I'm the parent right now. You know what? The, you know what, son or daughter? These things are destructive to your well-being. Watch constantly watching video games that you're killing somebody, you're hurting somebody. It's making you son or daughter. It's making you insensitive towards the violence that you watch on television and playing your computer games, son or daughter, mother or father, is making you insensitive towards human life. That's why there are people that have killed animals. They killed animals. And you know what? What? Saw this on YouTube. And they laughed about it. They laughed about it. So it's making you insensitive. So young people, even if your parents are not telling you not to do it, I just want to talk to you and say humbly, do it, do it. You know what? There are so many constructive things that you can do with your life. You know, you go to the library. You know why I say you go to the library? Somebody always asks me, where's the gold at? The real gold is in the library. I ain't talking about no gold chain because it holds knowledge that will free you from ignorance, decadence. It'll help you not to be deaf, dumb, and blind, okay? Or if you can't go to the library, Go to your computer and go and learn about mathematics. Go and learn about English. 
Now you can't tell me you can't do that because you know where you can go. You can go to YouTube and learn anything that you want to learn. Okay, but the and I like to say this, say this to young people. Regardless, I know that you are not responsible once you're a certain age. But, you know, go to your church, go to your mosque, go to your synagogue and do everything that you can to get closer to your creator. Because all of these material things that I am talking about, I have to talk. I'm talking to young people. These things are not going to make any difference at all. People want to shake your hand. People saying how good you are. People saying you're great. You're pleasing them. But work to please your creator. That's more important than somebody <laughs> clapping and saying you're great. And somebody giving you a pat on your back and saying you're a great guy. Because in the end, if your creator... Do not, does not think that you're a good fella, a good young lady. Oh, that ain't going to make no difference anyway. Okay? Thank you. You've been watching the Underground Railroad. Thank you. Salam alaikum. And you know what? This show, and you know what? If you like this show, please, on YouTube, I want you to share this video with somebody that has a child. A parent, okay, whether it be a girl, whether it be a little boy, a grown man, our mother, okay? Thank God for the mother because it says in Quran that paradise lies that mother, mother's feet. So young men and young women out there don't disrespect your mother because she has your best interest in mind after everybody is gone. Guess who's going to be there for you? Guess your mother. Okay, I want to say assalamu alaikum to everybody. Thank you for watching.